Writers, we are traveling across the globe from Tampa all the way to Cyprus. Welcome back to Writing with Authors. My name is Vincent A. Lancy, and we are bringing on the amazing Neil Kelders on the show today. He has, he has so much to offer, a lot of courage in sharing his story over on a mental health break. I found out he had a book, so I had to bring him on here and let me preview it before bringing Neil on. Have you ever suffered from depression, anxiety? Have you watched the world go by and felt empty and lonely? Have you had moments where you considered ending it? Today's guest experienced all of these, depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts, but believing he had tried everything to help himself, he closed his eyes to the world. One day, for some unknown reason, he says, he decided to speak. He spoke for the very first time about what was going on inside, and this was his first step towards the other side. In this book, he identifies the mindset that makes it difficult for us to change, and drawing on his own battles with his signature humor, his message is hope is one of hope, excuse me, despite all. In this book, you will also learn how to gain insight into why people find it difficult to ask for help, what stops them, and why can't they share their troubles. You'll have access to all these tools and several action steps, but without any wait, Neil, welcome back to the show. Vincent, how are you doing again? <laughs> I'm doing great, Neil. It's great to connect. And everyone, be sure to check out his show in the episode description or on a mental health break. He gave a lights out performance, so I'm expecting a value filled <laughs> here too. Last time we spoke strictly on your mental health. Your mental health is built on this book. Let's talk about the process to get this published. Yeah, um, the process, I suppose, initially was just me writing. It was like... Um, I suppose, uh, as I stated before, is that writing was very important for me always for my mental health. And even if I think back to school, I, I liked writing essays, you know, when you were in uh, in Ireland, we call it primary school. So, uh, you know, kind of 10 years of age, 12 years of age. I just loved exploring my mind and, and being creative uh, around that. And that was, you know, I used that as a tool for my mental health. So I had all these writings. And I knew someday I wanted to do something with it. Little did I know I would do something with it and write a book. <laughs> I love it. And let's let's actually dive more into that book. I previewed it in the beginning. Let's give our audience more info. Yeah, so it's, um, first of all, it's it's my, I actually put a post today and I said, it's uh, what the book is. It's kind of, it's a note to my mother and my loved ones to tell them that I'm doing well now. Because for 21 years, nobody knew about my mental health struggles until I was 36, so from 15 to 36. And, and you know, I always feel people will always wonder. And this is me being able to say, look, this is what I went through, I'm doing well. The book itself is my journey, but it's very conversational and very Irish and to, in tone as well and um, so it's like we're chatting here this is me talking in the book to you and uh, it's about my journey about how I see things with my mental health and mental health as a whole so I, I throw you know like we have the statement it's okay to be not to be okay and I, I I'm there no I want to be okay I, I go against that I understand what it means but no uh, so I, I throw a few things curveballs up in the air my thinking the book is as you go along the book, I say, hey, put it down a second. I have Neil's notes sections in it. And the Neil's notes sections are, hey, guys, do you know what? Try this, actually. I did this. You try it now. Let's get going. So the goal is not for you to finish a book as we've all done, Vincent, and be motivated. And then when we put it down, uh, what did they say? I had shelf loads of books. You've had shelf loads of books. Everybody's shelf loads of books. But I want this to be a tool you go back to and go, what did he do there? I did this exercise. So you're doing, you're actually starting your journey as you read but it's not just for people struggling and this is what i loved about it because i have a, a, a top psychiatrist in ireland has given me um the forward written the forward and he stated and this is what i wanted to hear that it's for those who aren't struggling also that you can gain a greater insight into what someone goes through and that's my goal is to target stigma as well and how you target stigma is by informing and educating all Man, Neil, I'm so glad I'm starting my day with you. Just uplifting <laughs> me right through the screen. I'm excited for this episode to air. 
So let's dive right into helping our audience a little more because writing a book is not an easy process. What is some advice you could have for everyone out there who's starting to write a book? Yeah, and you'll hear this all the time, just write. And it, and it is, it is just right. Set a, set a time. I do a Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes on, five minutes off. So I set four of those um, every day. So that's kind of two hour period. I would have said, okay, just write. Anytime, any, didn't, no structure, but I knew I had to do two hours every so often, every day. But as you write, then your writing is, and I don't worry about a structure at the moment. It's all over the place. It's there. Oh no, this doesn't fit in here. Don't worry about that. Down the line, that will fall into place. And then you bring editors on to help you with that process. But eventually what I would say is starting out is make a statement. So especially for nonfiction books, who's your book for? How's it going to help them? And what's the end result for that person? So my book was basically, it was for 15 to 36 year olds, the age I was, I was within my deepest depression. And the idea was to give them hope and to see that they can have a future. That was, that was my idea. Okay. So if you have that little statement, why the statement doesn't go into the book, no one sees the statement, but what it does, it guides you as you're writing, because you might feel, oh, I'm, I'm going off track. You just have that statement in front of you on your wall or wherever next to your laptop, and you keep going back to it and it guides you. So what I would say is have that little statement, have a consistency. And we we know this, Vincent, with everything, consistency is key. If you can't do the four Pomodoro technique, uh, the the two hours, do 10 minutes. What you want is just to keep your brain and your body into the motion of every day that you're doing bits and pieces. If you write 10 words, you write 10 words. If you write 500 words, you write 500 words. Keep it going consistently. So you have your statement, keep it going. Eventually, what you want to do as soon as you can, really, is structure your chapters under your statement. So the idea is you have your statement and then you say, OK, but what do people need to understand in order to get to that statement? What do people? So Neil says, I uh, help 35 to uh, 15 to 36 year olds gain hope. What do they need to know? They need to know what my struggle was to resonate with it, to click with me. I need to draw them in. They start resonating. So I tell stories and I bring people in. They need to know that I feared things, that I struggled, what I did when I was depressed or or when I was anxious, why I thought about suicide, things like this. And then I'm resonating them. They need to know my struggles. And then my second part was how I started the journey out of it, what I did, little challenges I set myself. So they need to understand how they can do that for their life. And then the end is, when when you come, I'm still in the trenches, I tell people, I, I'm not finished with my mental health. I don't know. I don't care, though. It doesn't matter anymore. That's the difference. It doesn't matter. So they need to see that, that stop asking yourself the big questions. Do take action and do and they come out. So the idea is they need to understand how they're going to get towards your statement of hope, of health. I love it. I took so many notes there for when the episode goes live. Everyone out there. That's a great way to start his style of taking breaks, get, holding himself accountable for four time periods. Again, it can be different for everyone, but once you start, it's a lot easier to get the ball rolling. It once It's just getting that pen or getting on the computer, getting that first step. That's a great way to do it. Just makes it manageable. It's feasible. Okay. We don't have to worry about writing the whole book. Let's break it down to 25 minutes until I feel yeah. more comfortable. I love that. And you mentioned you're still doing that. Is there plans for a second book? Let's talk about that. Yeah. I- Geez, man, I'm always I'm always thinking ahead. Um, but you know what? Like, uh, guys, just because I've written a book, you, you know, you can say this guy's achieving a lot. No, do you know, I, and this is what I want to state is this is my first time ever completing a project. I believe myself. OK, so you got to understand this. And I went through imposter syndrome and everything with this. I can't do this. Who would read mine? Who do I think I am to do this? OK, so you can do this. Trust me, because um. I think I've always, always got, this was part of my problem with my depression, anxiety. I went three quarters with everything and I fell apart. So this time I, it took me, I wrote the book in three months, but I fell apart. Okay. So I have ideas for a second book because I do talks with companies. I do coaching around mental health and well-being. I go into companies. Okay. So I'm very much, everything's about you, the people in front of me. So what I want to know is how I can best help you serve you in a sense. So I always ask everybody, what's the one question you have on mental health? What's your one question on mental health? And I've had people 
come with questions. So I have over five, 600 questions okay. from all these individuals within all the companies I've worked with, be it in the States, in Europe, in uh, wherever, in Ireland. And I put them into sections. So my idea is to answer all those questions. I may get a contribution actually from someone, from a clinical expert, a friend of mine actually who wrote the forward. I'm thinking about this. So you're getting kind of a layman, me the layman and, and, and the clinical expert, the, the advice there, but we'll come up with solutions because people ask the same question, but in different ways. Okay. And that draws different answers. All right. So the idea would be then that this book would be answering, if you're curious about mental health or well-being, this book will answer your questions that you have. That's the idea. I love the idea. I love everything you've done. And congratulations on the milestone. Be proud of yourself, everyone out there. Sometimes goals are harder for us than they are for others. Don't sweat it. You'll get there. Just stay true to your mission, your purpose. Now you mentioned this book again. Where can we find this book? Where can we find more on you, Neil? So uh, my name is neilkelders.com. I can send a link if needed. And the book is on Amazon, but it's on various platforms, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones, all these uh, bookshops. But it's on at all Amazon uh, sites. It's called The Other Side, A Memoir of Hope in the Midst of Depression. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for joining the show, Neil. Everyone tuning in. Merry Christmas if you are celebrating. I hope your day is great. Neil started us off on a great note. And to everyone else, next week is our series break, the fifth episode before our two-week break. Stay tuned for an incredible episode. Merry Christmas, all. Neil, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Vincent. <laughs>